I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so th- this was set to come out at the end of November, like right after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. but because we've now filmed it, it'll move up in the in the ranks. Okay. So it'll hang on. It'll <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today we have Nadine. Yay. And we're going to be talking about Ice Princess. This is Nadine. Hello. She uh, <laughs> drove so long to get here to be in this video today. And she's also an ice skater. I am. And wanted to be in this movie really bad. So that's why she is here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yay, I'm so excited. Let's talk about Ice Princess. Ice Princess is a 2005 theatrical release. It's directed by Tim Fywell, cinematography by David Hennings, editing by Janice Hampton, music by Christoph Beck, and it's written by Hadley Davis. The film stars Michelle Trachtenberg, who plays Casey, Joan Cusack, who plays Joan, Hayden Panettiere, who plays Jen, Kim Cattrall, who plays Tina, Trevor Bloomis, who plays Teddy, Kirsten Olsen, who plays Nikki, and Jocelyn Lai, who plays Tiffany. Hayden Panettiere did a bit of her own skating, but Michelle Trachenberg trained for eight months and did a ton of her own skating. She was also one of the only adults of the kids on the film. So like Hayden was still underage, but Michelle had just, was 18 or 19, I believe. And so she did a lot of like 20 hour days because she was allowed to be on the ice a lot longer than the kids. Um, she did sustain some injuries, but for the most part, stunt doubles did all the falls in the movie, except for a specific move, I guess, that would have been too obvious, so I guess she did it. I have no idea what move it is. It wasn't specified. This film did have a $25 million budget and made $27.6 million in the box office, and has a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought the camera work was beautiful, um, but I think that with the more advanced skaters, they followed them pretty nicely, mm-hmm. um, which was really good to see because... It's actually not the easiest thing to do. You've got yeah. a lot of dynamic movement, and I thought they did a really good job with that. I would agree. I think a lot of the movement in the film in general was well done. I also think while it wasn't like the most advanced or gorgeous or artistic lighting or anything in that regard, it was still beautiful mm-hmm. for the film they were making, especially the lighting they used in the rink during her last dance like the lighting they use complements her dress that she's wearing so well Mm -hmm. it always makes it just so stunning Mm -hmm. um but the camera work i agree especially i mean when you watch the olympics or any figure skating it's insane to watch these cameras follow them but obviously these cameras are on the ice with the skaters and it kind of is a little bit reminiscent of i watched miracle in august and that was we were in the ring with these hockey mm-hmm. players. It felt very much like that, which was exciting to see in this movie. Yeah. First of all, starts with a banger. No one by Ali and AJ. Mm. It goes hard, straight to the heart. I forgot it started with that. So I started the movie and I was like, Yeah. No one yeah. by Ali and AJ. Yeah. And no. then they really whip out some classics. They got some Jesse McCartney in yeah. there. I also thought the score was really. really Yes. I've always loved the music in this film. Even as a kid watching it, I, it just kind of strikes somewhere. It's really, yeah, yeah. really good. But yeah. I think that the tone and everything, even with the score, was it matched a lot of just Casey's overall energy. Yes. And what skating kind of feels like. So yeah, absolutely. I like the way they did it. Yeah. I also I love the score, especially. Um, I think any any scene where she's skating that isn't obviously like this is how it feels, even though yeah. that song is fire. But yeah. um, I, I love the actual score because it's assists in all the right places. There was never a moment of music that I was like, "This is too much." <laughs> like, yeah. what are we doing? Yeah. But the moments of like actual diegetic songs, you know, like the Ally and AJ song or the Jess McCartney song or whatever. Sometimes in t- like teen movies, girl, whatever it is you want to call it, young adult movies, um, it can feel very like. You put this here just because it was like the star of the time or whatever but all of them felt like very appropriate to me it was like okay yeah i buy it it's a nice yeah. moment for that like it's not yeah. a terrible moment and then the serious moments or whatever had the appropriate score and stuff like that yeah so i would agree with you yeah 100%. i love also the song that she the this two songs that she uses in her program so the one that she uses in regionals and then when she goes to sectionals i think those two the lyrics especially kind mm-hmm. of speak to what she's going through and what yeah. she's feeling and I absolutely love those two songs so yes I agree 
I have some like smaller things and okay. then we can kind of dive into like the meat of the story. My smaller things that I think maybe didn't particularly age well are like, the problematic diet culture, mm -hmm. you know, like a quarter cup of cheese I can yeah. pick out if I want to. Buckets and buckets of bread. <laughs> yeah, like that's, yeah. that stuff is obviously sad, problematic, was pushing that whole idea. Especially because it wasn't like a movie where the lesson was, no, you, can, you can't eat whatever you want as long as you just work hard or whatever. Yeah. It was, no, it was just part of the, no, you're just not gonna eat to be a figure skater, basically. Mm -hmm. Which I wasn't crazy about, that did not age well. It was probably part of, you know, it was part of that whole culture of the early 2000s, which was like, you have to have a stick straight thin body, period, yeah. end of discussion. Um, so that didn't age well. I wasn't crazy about that, yeah. obviously, but it's a couple tiny moments in the grand scheme of things, just like a lot of other stuff didn't age well. I do think like as much as I love these stories, the no mom, I'm throwing away your dream moment could have been maybe not so much a no, I'm throwing away your dream yeah. because it gets, it gets a little bit cliche, a little stereotypical, but it is definitely one of the more effective no mom, I'm throwing it away your is, dream. It is, I did, I, I do really appreciate it though. Like yeah. I get that it seems intense, but no, I love the intensity. Yeah. It's just how many movies do we have? You're throwing away your dream. No, I'm throwing away your dream. Yeah. So it's like it could have been like, why not? Not no, I'm throwing away your dream. Why not? This isn't my dream. Yeah. Like yeah. where did you think this was my yeah. dream? Yeah. I think it just goes back to where they were having a conversation at the dinner table, and her mom was like, "Then you need to give me something now." I hated that. I that made me so I, sad. <laughs> You've given me everything, then you need to give, give me, me something, something now. now. Problematic. So, I think that's kind of where going back to the conversation in the car, her saying, you know, giving up your dream is Yeah, yeah. Kind of it's a totally appropriate and perfect yeah. for the moment. Yeah. I just am like, wow, couldn't it just be like this isn't my dream though? Like mm -hmm. think about it. Yeah. It's really your dream. Yeah. It's not mine. Um or the dream you forced upon me when I was really young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How could I, I so choose much, that I, I want to go so to Harvard much, when I'm five years old? <laughs> I've got so much to say about this mother-daughter dynamic. <laughs> yeah, so the mother-daughter dynamics. Obviously, everyone knows Joan and Casey is the main mother dynamic, but I also think it's important to recognize Tina and Jen are another mm -hmm. mother di mm -hmm. mother daughter dynamic in this movie, and the parallels and the different like the yes. differences and everything yes. being shown. And I think it's so important mm -hmm. to see both of these dynamics. Yeah, and I almost like how they kind of did this whole interchange where. You know, Jen and Casey kind of switched places in a little bit of how their mothers are attached to their daughters. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Um, and they kind of gave up their roles to sort of switch the places in yeah, a yeah. way. So I really liked that. But um, Tina Harwood's character in general and the intensity that she has, um, I actually, I really like it. And I think that the parallel between Casey's mom and then Jen's mom, like they're both intense, but they're in totally different two intensities. You know what I mean? Yes, but also they're both living vicariously through, through their, their daughters. Yeah. Which, and, but so, so differently. Yeah. So I think like the dynamic of the daughters almost switching in, I don't know. I just, I, I think that that really kind of highlights the weakness and the wrong in doing that to your kid. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I really like that. Exactly. I also, the, the moment between the moms, I will, like, uh -huh. it always gives me chills yes. when Joan says, mm -hmm. you know, she'll do it the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, you're against Joan for a lot of the movie because you're like, you're, yeah. you're kind of pushing your dream on yeah. Casey. You're kind of like shaming her. Yeah. Oh, that's my other thing. Yeah. Joan has girl bossed into feminism so far she became sexist again. Yeah. Because and her whole about, like, like I would die if, if I, I saw, saw you in an outfit like that. Yeah. And it's like girl, and she's you like, went past feminism yeah. back into sexism. What yeah. are you doing? No, like, and she was like, Those dresses are actually very aer aerodynamically sound and you know, like I don't know. I I agree. <laughs> so like for her to be so far, like you have to be educated, you have to use your mind. We're, you know, we're strong women, we're past those yeah. days. It's like, but okay, There's a what if women want to wear those things? Yeah. So like that's, it, the whole point is to accept 
all parts of yeah. women and women are equal period so they can be in pink frilly things yeah or they can be in suits and tie yeah. like who cares yeah but she she went so far pat yeah. <laughs> she overcorrected yeah, it back into not, sexism i did not like that but and she she undermined and really kind of um sort of dismissed a lot of casey's passion towards yes. the sport in general and i that is just something yes. that it's well, very hard to watch. And what I kept, I also hated was, what's the shelf life yeah. on being a pro yeah. athlete? Yeah. It's like, okay, but like, also, being a pro athlete's nuts. Yeah. So like, if she's passionate about it, like, that's one of the hardest things you can do. Yeah. It's worth it. And yeah. she can be, also, her being like, Harvard's not for, like, well, yes it is. She could go to Harvard <laughs> at 50. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. She could go to, you could yeah. go to Harvard right yeah. now. Joan, you keep saying you missed your chance. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. You could go to Harvard if you applied and got it. You could <laughs> go in right now. Yes, yes you but could. But Casey being able-bodied and athletic right. and, and being right now, like in love with skating. Right, now. right exactly, yeah. exactly. What I love is like Tina, like it's framed in the movie as like, Tina's supposed to be like this villainy, yeah. mean yeah. woman, and her mom is like this loving, mm -hmm. like supportive of her certain aspects yeah. or whatever. So it's like kind of showing you this like twisted mentality where mm -hmm. it's like her mom is may seem like loving and sweet, and she is, but she's also got this like same thing Tina's doing to her daughter, just yeah. from like a yeah. loving, gentle energy yeah. instead of like a. Yeah. No, this is what we're doing. You're gonna do it, and yeah, no, you I, can cry about it. If yeah, you want. I really liked. I just like I said, I really liked the whole kind of parallel between the two mothers and then the two children, and then kind of them switching and highlighting. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of the two faults. Right. I, I, I right. thought it was a really, really interesting sort of comparison that they made. Yes, I agree, and I, I liked that you see the weakness in both the moms as well. Where yeah. like Tina cheats. Yeah. Virtually, by giving yeah. her the new skates. And that, like, oh. And there's nothing, like, more heart shattering than Casey's skates mob. Oh. Oh my god. And, like, Straight she doesn't even get to finish through. the sentence, and then the bells ring, and yeah. then the two just have to separate. Mm. Yo. Mm -hmm. Because nothing else has to be said. She's yeah. like, I know what you did. Yeah. You know what you did. Why would you do that? Yeah. It's so powerful. And Hayden Penitty, yeah. Forget um, about it. Yeah, I could go all day about her acting and her ability in this movie. Yeah. She did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, story-wise, I know. Do you have anything else you want to say? Mention about these two mom-daughter the dynamic, the whole. Um. No, I just really hate that Casey's mom sort of dismissed her too many times. Yeah. Um, that does not feel good. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially when Casey's trying to work her best to support herself to do it yeah um that's not easy um, no especially with how late she's joining the sport i feel a lot of that a lot of this movie kind of mirrors my own life and sure. so i know what that's like um so i'm happy that the mother ends up coming around but it's I know, hard to, have to, to like see her work so hard just to get her mom to like watch her for 10 minutes and then change her mind. Well, you know? the scene where she's like, just come see me skate, yeah. and she's like, I can't. I'm yeah. like, oh, yikes. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. But one note about Tina Harwood. Tina Harwood, the first scene that she's ever introduced in is also a very intense scene. And I love that. They just start her off right off the bat as being this like very, like she demands all of the, mm -hmm. like that respect and, and but um, her character is actually loosely based off of Tanya Harding. I figured. So um, I actually love Tanya. So I she have was a an incredible bit, skater. <laughs> I have a little bit of a bias with that, but um, I love Tina Harwood's character in general. Like I'm like, yeah, there's this whole stigma and these sort of judgments against her, but I think the way she worked so hard to cultivate her own community and her own rank and, and to do what she's doing even though she's doing it vicariously through her kid I mean it just shows that like her her one of her main loves is is the rank and it is her sport and yeah I just I like how it shows the heart but you can also the scene where you get to see that she has absolutely learned yeah. and grown is when she was like there's not a minute that I that don't I regret don't it regret and wish I could go, go back. back and not yeah. do that mm -hmm. which is like that's yeah. good. You've seen she's learned. She learned from yeah. the past, you know, yeah. greed, mistake, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And you can tell she's just passionate about skating. Yeah. 
I love watching her on the ice too when she just kind of in the shots where they show her instructing I kind of liked sort of her demeanor but the one thing I didn't like was that they never showed her on skates and I'm like mm, I mean I get it it's really hard to train people but she is like the coach and it would have been nice even to just see her standing still in the skates I wish that we could have seen yeah. her I don't know I mean maybe Kim Cattrall just didn't want to be in skates I don't know Possibly. yeah as much as I love Michelle Trachtenberg, I think Hayden Pantier steals this movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was about to say one hundred percent. Michelle does an incredible job. Yeah, Hayden blows everyone out of the water. I mean, yeah, she. I couldn't stop like. And you have powerhouses like Kim mm -hmm. Cattrall and Joan Cusack in oh, this movie, yeah. and Hayden Pantier is out here stealing. Yes, Michelle. Yes, she she did a phenomenal job. I mean, her acting, but also. She, I think, just watching from the eye that I have, her technical ability out there skating was better than Michelle's. You can yeah. even tell in her, in the movements and her body and yeah, just yeah. the awareness that she had and, and also just the intensity of the way she delivered her scenes, some of those scenes. She did a really, really good job. But I really appreciated it, watching her as a skater, watching her do doing the skating. Um, I think she just, she did yeah. a wonderful job. I'd have no idea. Yeah. She just steals the show. I also think the next best person is Kim Cattrall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, Michelle and Joan, yeah. incredible. Yeah. But Hayden, Kim Cattrall. I mean, how did they even get Kim Cattrall to do this? Is what I, want I to think know. Kim Cattrall was, like, really wanting to not do things that were Sex and the City. Um, I think she was like, you know, I have Sex and the City, mm -hmm. but I also want to do other things. I don't want to be Samantha Jones yeah. for my whole life. Yeah. So I think she wanted to break off. And do yeah. stuff and got this opportunity and was like it's an interesting character i'm sure because it is an interesting and, character yeah. and man did she i think she run did. with it yeah it was really really good both of both of yeah. that especially the scene in the hallway uh -huh. where they really actually because for the most part the scenes are like jen and casey tina and right. casey casey and joan mm -hmm. and then like the one tina and joan moment yeah you don't get a lot of tina and jen only the like you know, Jen, no, don't do that. Yeah. Or fine, Jen, you yeah. can go do this or whatever. That's the real moment you actually get them mm -hmm. being like a mother, daughter, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put those two powerhouses up oh, next yeah. to each other. I would like kill to be on that set oh, in yeah. that moment. Yeah. Just to be like, I would have been yeah. glued. Every take, yeah. every I would have been like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> like I'm watching two master, I'm sure. Yeah. It helped Hayden having Kim, who's also, like, she's an incredible actress. Yeah. People can be all like, well, she was Samantha Jones, all she did was, no. no. She was incredible at Samantha Jones, period. <laughs> but, like, she's, obviously, this is nothing like Samantha Jones. Except maybe the bossy, like, in yeah, power part yeah, of it. Yeah, You know? Just the leader, sort of. Right, the leader yeah. aspect of yeah. it. But, I think they probably, like, fed off of each other, and it made it, mm. like... Yes. That scene is so good. Very good scene. I felt like the ice sounds were very realistic and I really appreciated that. So the taking off, the landing, a lot of the edge yeah, yeah, sounds, yeah. I think they did a really good job with it. Anytime a parent has a mentality of like, well, you owe me because I raised you. Yeah. Um, personally, Disgusting. Uh, you decided to have the child. Child did not decide to be born. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's how that yeah. works. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a really... Um, th there was just this, like, sinking feeling, even just watching that scene. You know, then you need to give me something now. Like, that's... Well, and the whole concept, like, it's also, like, toxic for Joan because she has this whole idea that... Casey's had this terrible life because she wasn't able yeah, to give her yeah, all these things. Yeah. When you fed her, you nurtured her, you loved her, yeah. you gave her room to grow, like, that's all she does yeah. need. Yeah. She doesn't need some big fancy whatever or really, some fancy whatever. They don't address, like, a father figure at I know. all. They, I thought so, they were going to say he died or something. Yeah. I was ready for a parent death. No, yeah, no? no. So we don't know, but, then, but there's obviously this absence in she doesn't really... Um, I guess she's not even giving herself enough credit for her, everything that she's right. done for her, her right. daughter. So. Right, and she's like, you know, 
I wasn't able to give you this and I wasn't able to give you that. She's focusing on that negative when it's like, okay, but like, you're so proud of her. Look at how proud you are of her. That's mm -hmm. large in part because of you. Like you were able to help her, her and facilitate the, yeah. you know, and she was able to blossom and grow, whatever. Mm -hmm. So then for Casey to turn around and be like, you gave me everything. You've given me everything. Like is beautiful yeah. and shows the bond and how much they do love each other. But then for John to go and be like, okay, well give me something now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. When they're going to, I don't even know what it was, like a, like an open sort of, like they go to Harvard to like talk to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I hated, like an orientation. Yes, maybe. an orientation. I hated when they were there and Casey's like trying her best to time manage. Um, and her mother just says, oh, we've got nothing but time. Well, this is kind of the same thing where you didn't even, you know, you didn't even ask, what do you mean we have nothing? She's already owning in that sentence, like, this is our time and we're going to spend it here, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's really dismissing yeah. anything else Casey might have to do with the rest of her day, but right. particularly that it's skating. It's right. Like, the other scene that, like, always just makes me so mad is when her mom goes in her room and is like, Pick, t picks up she the skates, takes the and, skates go, and throws them in the closet throws them mm. by the shoes or whatever yeah. while Casey is awake doing homework like I, she, she did it so she could watch her do it yeah oh. I was like <laughs> yeah. oh the like the subtle it was the subtext very, of like I do not approve and of I don't you want skating you doing it. Yeah, it was, I'm putting these away like very, ugh it was very petty I hate it yeah. I love that they're trying to show how dedicated and how passionate she is and they're obviously highlighting that she has this given just this natural talent, talent yeah. about her but you're not going to be landing doubles and triples and just whipping them out like you did them accidentally um in a span of less than a year mm -hmm. from what i remember it was kind of we were following her academic year and she did this way too quickly it yeah. doesn't work like what's that. a realistic timeline um Obviously, it's going to depend on how the often you're It's going to depend on the the ability, everything. Um, but I'll just tell you, like I started when I was 19. I started just like her in the beginning of the film with little kids in class, and I'm like sitting there, like carefully trying to do while they're like zipping around me. Um, I can do. There are six major jumps in figure skating. I can do five of them, and I'm like just now landing an axle that's like slightly under rotated. So we're getting there, but um, all of these are single rotations. Like they're they're not doubles, I, not triples. No, no not yet. Well, yeah. triple axle—that's like a huge deal. Yeah, yeah. She does. I think for especially in women's skating. I know, oh, like in, in men's skating, they're doing like quadruples oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever frack. Yeah, the frack for yeah. The triple axle in women's no, skating. No, she like does. A, yeah, she does triples in her. I think she does like a triple flip in her like last program. And I don't know. It's just it's a it's a really unrealistic progression. But I I I guess the idea is that. Well, and you said you started at nineteen. Yes. Can they know how old you are now? I am twenty four. So. <laughs> I'm twenty nine. So she can relax. I started skating. I mean, yeah. So I've been skating for four years, four four and a half years now. So. And you're landing, you know, yeah. Well, and this, this is, is where I'm but at. You, yeah. you know, you do other things. Mm -hmm. so everyone relax. Um, but right, it, I mean, it takes a ton of practice. It does. It does, and it's really, um, it's something that the body has to form a muscle memory to. It's something that it takes years and years of progression to get to where she ultimately ended up in the end of the film <laughs> and I love that for her. I love how inspiring. We love an inspiring cute movie that maybe is but a little rushed it's in its timeline. <laughs> it's not really realistic. Um, it's way too fast and yeah. One thing that I thought was interesting though is how she started to apply her physics to privately kind of coach and give tips to the other junior level skaters. That was really interesting. Um, but also there was like this sort of, I kind of saw that as like, eh, how how realistic is that even also? Like, these people have been skating since they were children, likely, who have had, you know, coaches committed to them over a long right, course right. of, like, how are you now suddenly going to coach them? <laughs> like, Well, I, not not even on that side, I was like, what coach is letting you this 17-year-old yeah. yeah. girl with a physics computer Yeah coach them. yeah no no yeah no coach would ever let that happen yeah i think the way they kind of portrayed it seemed as though she was like arranging with them privately 
but still like well and i feel like they kind of brush it under the rug that she's being paid to yeah, do that yeah they i kind just, of brush it under the rug that she's I like pay me yeah and i'll tell you how to fix it well yeah because she was desperate to try to pay for her own skating right so but like I just, I thought there was a little bit of this, okay, I, I appreciated it, like she's actually applying the math and the science to tell them exactly what to do, but I'm like, hmm, you're not really trained in this, so you're, yeah, I mean, I like how they tried to, to combine the two things, right, but, right, right, but, right, of course, anyway, and then something, I know we talked a lot about the mother-daughter relationship, I also love Jen and Casey's relationship yeah. throughout this film. It starts with the whole, like, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, she's Miss Popular, she's Miss Physics Geek, yeah. whatever, Math yeah. Geek, whatever, she's Science Geek, whatever they say. Yeah. And how it becomes, like, you have what I want, you have what I want, to slowly being like, oh, well, our parents, oh, well, this, oh, well, that, we're gonna help each other, yeah. and now they're friends. Yeah. Like, I, I love that yeah. progression. I think instead of, like, keeping them enemies, and letting them like actually become friends is very yeah. empowering and very yeah. wonderful to see. Yeah, and it kind of um, they they almost break their own eyes in a way. <laughs> like, yeah, they, like, do. they kind of there's already this like preconceived like oh she's Miss Popular and and I'm you know but then they end up coming down to their level yes. together. So yes. Oh, in the moment after the fight in the hallway mm -hmm. when Casey comes out and offers her hand is like. So good. Yeah. I love a good girl friendship. Yeah. It's so meaningful and beautiful <laughs> yeah. to see. Yeah. I guess the, the, the major theme of this is like against all the odds that she has to work. Like she has mm -hmm. to work so hard. I guess, um, I don't know. I just love that she was able to prove herself and to work so hard to get to where she mm -hmm. ultimately went to. I love that. I love the line that she says where she's like, I want to, to see what I can do in this sport. Like, yes, I love that line. She didn't want to give that up. So I guess I just, um, I appreciate it as a skater too, who started out very similarly. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a different pressure you have as an adult skater um, and as someone who's like, way late in the game and you know but um i don't know i just like how it made you kind of believe she believed in herself yeah you kind of believe in yeah. it just gives you like this sense of hope i think yes <laughs> i love that i want to touch on the stereotype and like flack that girl movies get so this movie obviously i feel like the opinion anytime someone hears about this movie is either what the heck is that i've never heard of it mm -hmm. or is oh it's some stupid girl movie here's the thing i feel like people call empowering women movies stupid girl movies because they don't want women to be empowered or women to feel this sense of like hope and mm -hmm. powerful you know like, this story is about Casey finding yeah. power and confidence yeah. in something, along with other women. Yeah. Okay, I just had a... This is a little off, but no, I love um, it. the scene where she is in the Harvard interview, and the guy's like, straight up, we won't reschedule. Like, yeah. he's almost already judging her for... Choosing like, not Harvard. Yeah. Right, exactly. So... That's like how I... It, it, you can see the same things in, like, when women want to be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. There's this whole, like, oh, well, you don't want to work. You want to be a stay-at-home mom. But then when they want to work, it's, oh, you're going to be a working mom. You're not going to stay home with your kids. Like, there's always a double-edged sword for women. And, like, a movie where it's majority women. The only man in the movie is Teddy, pretty much. Besides, like, Tina's dad. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, the only, and, like, an I announcer. Didn't think about the that. only boy that has multiple lines in the movie um, is Teddy. Mm -hmm. And this movie, by far and away, passes the best tell test, Beck tell test, however you pronounce it, which is women have a conversation that does not revolve around a uh, man. Yeah, yeah. For like more than two lines or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, it's more than two women have to have a conversation that doesn't relate to a man. Okay. You'd be surprised at how many movies don't pass that test. It's disgusting. Mm. So this obviously, by far and away, passes that test because yeah. it's majority women talking about ice skating. Granted, of course, they talk about Teddy at some point. If yeah. it does happen, or she talks about her boyfriend or whatever else. Um, oh, and that one dude that like she talks to at the party for like two <laughs> seconds. It's like, yes, yeah. there's another guy. In the movie. But yeah, the, the whole point is, this is a very women-centered finding your power, finding your confidence, 
friendship, love, beautiful, mother, daughter, whatever. And movies like that always get pooped on for some reason. Because we live in some, you know, whatever, patriarchal society. <laughs> we'll get really deep about it. But, um, and I hate that because this movie is actually such a beautiful story, both from mother daughter perspectives, from friendship perspective, mm -hmm. and from a solo finding your power, finding Casey's your confidence, finding your passion yeah. perspective. That, like blossoming, coming of age, whatever. So much is happening in this movie deeply. Yeah. And people just want to write it off as like, oh, it's just a girl movie, yeah. which is disgusting, and I hate it, and I just needed to say that. <laughs> I also always cry every single time when she sees her mom in the audience. Oh. Every single Listen, time. Listen, I cry in many scenes. <laughs> because the a scene between lot Tina and Jen? It. Super emotional. A I didn't cry this it. time, which I feel like yeah. I didn't really cry. Yeah, Good. no, I, I, I cried. I did. Oh, yeah. Well, because a lot of this really. Um, it's in a special place in my heart um, because I see a lot of myself in this film. Yeah. Uh, but but it is. I mean, even somebody like you watching it, it's it's powerful enough to sort of. Yeah. Like you transcend can even react the fact that, that I'm not a nice skater. And no, no. I mean, like you can. You know, the 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 emotion is is there. Yeah. And I think that it's powerful enough to like make anybody cry. So. Yeah. What do you think of Ice Princess? <laughs> I mean, obviously I'm coming from a little bit of a bias, but I absolutely love this film. I think it was done beautifully. I think the camera work really supported, you know, the setting itself is a difficult thing to film anyway. Um, I think the actors did a brilliant job. The music was great. The themes, the story, everything. I'm only nitpicky about a little bit of how- The technicalities of yeah, the Yeah, and just, which is funny, because yeah. I'm always nitpicky about the technicalities yeah. of the film, so. <laughs> But, um, I think it was stunning, um, and I loved it ever since I was a kid, and nothing's gonna change about that. Yeah. It's awesome. a great movie. Yeah. I also really enjoy Ice Princess, obviously. Is it the greatest movie ever made? No. Because it's what is? Movie. What is the greatest yeah. movie ever made? And don't, if anyone in the comments says Citizen Kane, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna riot, but it is I think it's, effective. Yeah, exactly. That is a perfect word. I was just gonna say, I think it's a movie that everyone needs to see. You just need to it's, see it, okay? It's like, touching, it's funny, it's yeah. um, hopeful, yeah. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful film, especially for anyone who's ever like had a dream and wanted to go for it, which is like everyone. So like, yeah. you know, maybe not everyone. Some people don't like, you know, don't find a passion and that's okay. But it's a good movie. It is. What would you rate it? Uh, I would definitely rate this 10, 10 blades out of 10. 10 blades out of 10? Yeah. Let's see it. All right, my final rating is seven <laughs> blades out of 10. Mostly for technical reasons. All right. I mean, I would like notch a little bit, but I just love it too much. No, to no, no, come on. So, I'm nostalgia, thinking. I'm a big nostalgia yeah. always plays a factor. So uh, mine is seven blades out of 10. Our total movie count is. Somewhere on the screen, not here, but in editing it will be. And then um, I cried. I cried. So our total cry count is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching, when follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. Follow Nadine on Instagram. Yep. Maybe she'll post ice skating. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming. Me. So amazing. Um, join Patreon. Nadine is a patron. Yeah. <laughs> so not only did she drive all the way up here, she's a patron and she has merch. Like, yeah. come on, you guys. Yeah. Come on. Um, and then buy merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy merch. I'm also wearing merch, but you can't buy this one anymore. It's limited edition. Sorry. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you, and don't be... Don't be Harvard interviewer about it. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's that, I guess. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it! Yay!